Welcome to this presentation on the best practices for TAC code application. During this presentation, we're going to refer to TAC code as just TAC. Applying TAC to the existing surface during the construction or resurfacing of a roadway is crucial to its performance. Being able to recognize a good TAC application is a key responsibility of both the project inspection staff and the TAC distributor operator. During the placement of a new lift of asphalt on a properly taxed surface, the ability to obtain optimal density and durability is improved. The proper application of TAC helps prevent the lateral movement of the mixture during compaction, thereby minimizing pushing and shoving of the mixture and focusing the roller's energy into compacting the mixture rather than displacing the mixture. Let's take a look at a roadway. A typical roadway is constructed in multiple lifts. The number of lifts is related to the intended use of the structure and certain qualities of the native soils encountered on site. A proper pavement design determines the number of lifts and thickness of each lift to meet or exceed the expected lifetime loading of the structure. During the design, it is assumed that all layers are bonded together and are functioning as a monolithic pavement structure. If this is not the case, the structure's performance is greatly reduced and the life of the pavement will be less than optimal. For an example, consider what happens to a stack of five sheets of 3 8 inch plywood. Placing them between two saw horses and placing a 60 pound dumbbell in the center causes more than a half inch of deflection. In this unbonded condition, each individual layer acts independently. Taking those same five sheets of 3 8 inch plywood and gluing them one on top of another produces a fully bonded structure that functions as a monolithic slab of wood. Placing 160 pounds of dead weight in the center of them produces only a quarter inch of deflection, even though the weight was increased by more than 165% it produced less than 50% of the original deflection of the unbonded boards. In a well-bonded pavement with all layers acting as a monolithic layer, stresses applied by a load will be distributed throughout the entire pavement. The top layer will be experiencing compression as the structure deflects ever so slightly and the lower layers will be experiencing tension as they are stretched by this deflection. Looking at a strain profile, a well-bonded roadway will have peak microstrains both in the compression and in the tension mode of a little more than 100 microstrains. If properly designed, a monolithic pavement structure can handle the applied loads and resulting strains. Let's look at what happens if there is debonding between the intermediate layer and the base layer. The amount of horizontal microstrains peak at higher levels both at the top and bottom of the uppermost deep bonded layer. In this instance, a 50% increase in strain occurs, and if the layer is unable to handle the strain, a bottom up crack will begin at the area of deep bonding and propagate upwards, further diminishing the capacity of the roadway to perform as designed. Let's take a look at specifications. The Maryland specification under 5040304 historically required that the tack should be applied resulting in a residual asphalt uniformly applied at a rate of 0.01 to 0.05 gallons per square yard. Since our typical tack is 60% asphalt, achieving that 0.01 gallons of asphalt per square yard would require a higher application rate. Dividing the residual rate 0.01 by 60% yields an application rate of 0.017, which rounds up to 0.02 gallons per square yard. Converting the other residual rate yields an application rate between 0.02 and 0.08 gallons per square yard. The rate being applied by this distributor is 0.05 gallons per square yard and would have met the specifications. Note the color of the freshly applied tack. It is brown as compared to the black tack that has broken 
meaning the asphalt portion has separated from the water and emulsifiers and has set, meaning the water and emulsifiers have completely evaporated. Once set, the tack is less sticky and should not adhere to the tires of the paver. In May 2014, the specification was modified to include non-tracking tack coat, also known as NTTC, and the wording for the specification relating to the application of standard tack was changed from residual asphalt to an application rate of 0.01 to 0.05 gallons per square yard. Trucks and paving equipment normally will not pick up freshly applied emulsified tack, but if traffic is allowed to travel over tack that has broken but not set, the chances are high that some pickup will occur and reapplication of tack may be necessary to ensure proper bonding between the layers. As seen here, the best method to prevent tack pickup problem is to make sure the tack is completely set prior to haul trucks, the MTV, and the paver driving over the material. The current specification is dated November 2018 and calls for an application rate of 0.04 to 0.10 gallons per square yard. The upper limit is virtually equal to the older residual asphalt application rate of 0.05 and the newer minimum rate of 0.04 is basically double the older minimum residual asphalt application rate of 0.01 gallons per square yard. It's important to remember that it took an application rate of 0.02 gallons per square yard of an emulsification that is basically 60% asphalt binder to produce a minimum residual asphalt application rate of 0.01 gallons per square yard. This higher rate is intended to produce improved bonding between the asphalt layers. This is especially important as the thickness of asphalt layers used today is less than what the industry used in the past. As the layers decrease in thickness, the ability of the individual layers to act independently of the underlying structure is also reduced. A good bond is mandatory for optimal performance. It is important to keep in mind that the ultimate goal is to produce a uniform coverage of tack that completely covers the entire surface with a little excess at the sides. With an adequate application of tack that produces a strong bond between the pavement layers. No matter how good the mix is and the level of workmanship in placing and compacting the mixture, an insufficient bond between layers will diminish the performance of the asphalt pavement. This paving operation is following all the best practices in tacking the surface to be paved, hauling, placing, and compacting a high performance mixture to ensure long life for the riding surface and the drivers who will be using this roadway. What exactly is tack? That's a good question. Tack comes in a multitude of combinations, but the most common form of tack used in Maryland is a sprayed application of performance graded asphalt which has been suspended in water using surfactants. This soup is referred to as an asphalt emulsion, asphalt suspended in a water base. The surfactants are basically soaps that help keep the asphalt particles in suspension. In the old days, cutback asphalts were frequently used. The cutbacks used a lighter petroleum solvent such as naphtha to suspend the asphalt droplets and when applied to the road surface, the light ends quickly evaporated. Because of environmental concerns, this practice is no longer used and the asphalt emulsions have taken over the market. The primary tacks that are used in Maryland are CRS-1 and CRS-1H. CRS stands for Cationic Rapid Setting and refers to the presence of positively charged asphalt particles. Since all the asphalt particles have a like electrostatic charge, they repel each other, and the asphalt particles are kept apart until the emulsion is applied to the surface of the roadway. Once on the roadway, the asphalt particles coalesce or come together at the, as the water carrier evaporates and the electrostatic charge is neutralized. You can access the qualified products list, also known as a QPL, 
online by searching m.shaqpl and scrolling down to emulsified asphalt and clicking on the emulsified asphalt tack coat. There you will find a PDF of all the currently approved products that have successfully gone through the qualification process. Everything from CRS1 to CRS1H to non-tracking tack codes are available from various suppliers and locations. So why, why are we here watching this video? It's not like there's a lot of old out-of-date equipment out there. We now have modern high-tech computerized equipment at our disposal. Yet there are times when the amount of tack being applied to the roadway may be less than optimal. Or it may look like we have black spaghetti being extruded out the back of the distributor. Or truck traffic may have picked up the tack, leaving the roadway bare at the most critical areas. This tack won't help bond the layers together. This, this is a little more uniform. Uniform what is the question? The transverse joint looks pretty good, but the tack distributor did not do a very good job elsewhere. So, let's do it correctly. Clean the site. Remove loose and friable materials from the surface to be paved. The tack needs to be applied to a solid material, not loose stones or a dusty surface. When patching, check the corners and make sure they are clean properly. Apply tack to vertical faces and edges. This seals the area between the existing materials and the new pavement, keeping water out of the structure and preserving its integrity. Make sure that the tack is applied uniformly along the edges. Then cover the horizontal area uniformly. Look at a great job a modern sweeper does while reducing fugitive dust with water suppression. Here the vac truck is cleaning up the transverse joint in preparation of the tack application. All the loose debris has been removed and the joint and surface is ready to be properly tacked. No loose particles here. A good dose of tack has been applied to the transverse joint, getting down into the crevices. The conscientious distributor operator is hitting the longitudinal joint by itself, getting to vertical surfaces and making sure there is adequate tack along the joint. While backing up, he hits the transverse joint again and again and then covers the full surface with a uniform coat of tack. Once it has broken and set, the surface is ready for paving. Here's a nice uniform application with no tack pickup on the tires. Here the controls are being set at 0.035 gallons per square yard and the distributor operator is waiting for the temperature of the tack to heat up to the manufacturer's recommended temperature for spraying. The operator uses his tack pour pot to get tack on the vertical surfaces of the transverse joint prior to backing the distributor into position. As the operator makes his run, he adjusts the arms out ensuring sufficient tack is applied to the longitudinal joints. The application is fairly uniform, but after a few hundred feet the operator checks his work and increases the application rate to 0.045 gallons per square yard and makes another run. The higher application rate and the same forward speed causes the pumps to increase their pressure and the fan widths are increased creating an even more uniform coverage attack. Getting tack applied to a solid foundation is critical in the life of the pavement. 
even in such an inconspicuous area like this. Taking the time to clean out the loose debris will ensure a superior bond to pavement below. Each inch of the surface needs to be clean and tacked properly for the pavement to function as designed. The importance of the tack operation cannot be underestimated. Here the right hand pull was placed the previous day to allow easy access during the completion of the approach to the newly constructed bridge. Taking the time to double tack along the cold longitudinal joint and then to make sure the transverse joint abutting the bridge each gets an ample application of tack, helps seal the joints and prevent rain from seeping into the joints and deteriorating them at an accelerated rate. The importance of the tack application cannot be stressed enough. Understanding that a properly designed pavement structure will only function optimally if there is proper drainage, proper selection of material for the aggregate base course, proper thickness of pavement layers, and that all those pavement layers are functionally monolithically to withstand a lifetime of repetitious loading that the roadway is expected to receive. The tack not only must be applied at the correct rate to a clean surface, but the sequencing of the operations must ensure that there is sufficient time for the tack to break and set completely. If the tack is removed by the tires of the haul truck, the MTV, or is picked up by the paver, the proper bond strength will be less than optimal, and this will most likely occur in the worst place, the wheel path. The proper tack application is essential for a successful paving operation and the longevity of the pavement structure. Here's to a job well done. Congratulations. I would like to thank David A. Brambourne Incorporated, Francis O'Day Incorporated, P. Flanagan and Sons Incorporated, Gray and Sons Incorporated, Reliable Contracting Company Incorporated for allowing us to film their fine operations and the Asphalt Institute and the National Center for Asphalt Technology for their contribution to the graphics.